What is up everybody, Ryan here from Ryan Berry Photography and DLC and this week I'm going to talk about how to make your videos just that little bit more interesting. What is up everybody, thank you very much for joining me and making this a thing. Um, I appreciate all the support from my last video so I'm just going to get right into it this week. Um, this week I want to talk about how to make your videos a little bit more interesting, whether that's a cinematic video or if it's just a little walk around video or a vlog, um, anything to make that little bit more pop. So what do I mean when I say make your video a little bit more interesting? Well, there are a couple of ways that you can improve your videos by doing little things in both in the camera and outside of the camera, um, to make your videos just pop that little bit more, make that a little bit more intriguing for people. The goal when filming a video is to try and keep people emotionally involved, keep them interested. If you're just sitting like I am in front of a camera with no interesting points for the whole time, you just start rambling and rambling and rambling, people lose interest. But there are things that you can do to try and keep people more interested in your video and also tell a story at the same time. Your goal with any video should have a clear beginning, middle and end. So you wanna take the person who's watching on a journey. You wanna start off by telling what you're gonna tell them, what you're gonna show them, in the middle, you wanna start building up to what you're gonna be doing by making that journey interesting. And then by the end, you've got the resolution, you've got your final product, where you're building up to. So I guess, how about I show you what I'm talking about instead of just doing what I said not to do. Hey, there we go. All right, so for this example, I'm gonna be talking about um, some of the gear I use, doing a little bit of a tour of the room that I'm in, some of the stuff that I utilize to make these videos for you guys and what I utilize moving forward. Um, so some things that you can do to try and make that just that little bit more um, interesting and how to make these shots of gear just that little bit more interesting. So watch. So all this video that you're seeing right now was done via uh, my secondary camera, the one I spoke about in my first video, the G7. Um, as you can see, when I'm doing in-camera transitions, as I was talking about, it basically means that at the end of a sentence, at the end of what you're speaking about, or at the start of what you're speaking about, you're doing a turn, whether it's to the left or it's to the right. It's a quick um, jerking motion or it's a quick rotation motion, um, whether it's dropping forward, dropping back, um, to in post, edit them together and cut them together. You can also utilize these in-camera transitions to transition from say your vlog setup to your actual camera setup. Um, this allows the person viewing your video to be a little bit more interested in what you're doing and it's not just a stagnant person talking and talking and talking. Um, and it helps you to tell a story a little bit more. Um, and it helps you get to that final stage of, this is what I was gonna show you and now this is what you're looking at. And it makes things a lot better in the in-between. I don't really delve too much into like the daily vlog side of things. Number one, I work full time and I just I just don't have time to work a vlog in with that. But it's just, I am by no means on a level where it's interesting to see how my life runs. But there are people out there that do do the daily vlog like Casey Neistat and um, high level celebrities that will do a vlog every day and they will be doing different things every day and people will just follow them, brushing their teeth, having a shower, doing eating their breakfast, doing whatever they need to do. Um, and it is repetitive, it's the same thing, but there are people that are watching that are the people that are just over the top interested in these people's lives. They find it incredibly interesting to live vicariously through them. Um, where I'm not on that level, I don't, I don't feel the need to put out a vlog every day. Um, the only time you'll see me or the guys doing vlogs is when we're at events and we'll be trying to keep you guys involved in what we're doing there. So now that I've shown you how to do the in-camera transition and how you should be setting that up for that, that point to point cut, um, how about we jump into Premiere and I'll show you how to do that stitch very simply, um, yeah, inside of Premiere Pro Timeline. Alrighty, so here we are um, on my Mac. I transferred all the data from my main PC because it has an SD card reader. Um, onto my Samsung T5. Now I utilize an SSD because I edit between my main PC and my Mac um, quite often. So it's just a little bit easier to have it all on the one drive so I can chop and change between two PCs. Um, so I'm gonna open up Premiere here. 
and once it's opened, I will go through my file management and how I go about importing and exporting. I will do a bit more of an in-depth look at the tools that I utilize in the Adobe Cloud um, because I got a couple of people asking me a uh, difference between Adobe stuff and Apple stuff like the um, Final Cut Pro and everything. Um, so I will do a bit more in-depth if people want to see that. Um, if you do want to see that, let me know in the comments below. So I'm going to go into my finder, which on Windows is your document folder. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of you are capable of getting to where you stored your footage. Um, go into here. So I've got mine set up. So I've got the audio in one file, the footage from the Lumix camera, which I've done a little B-roll and the vlog footage um, on that camera. And then the talking head and talking to you guys footage is all on the Sony um, camera so that's in the Sony footage folder um, this just helps break up and let me know um, where I've put like b-roll where I've put um, interview footage and stuff and when you do like a really big day and you've got a lot on it's good to have it organized like this and then I'll have usually when I do episodes and stuff I'll have another folder for all the other elements that go along with it um, like trailers cutovers pngs and all the stuff that i use to make the gags and all of that but for now these are the folders that i have um uh for this particular scenario so you're going to drag and drop those into premiere um and once they choose to import Okay, so now you've got all your footage imported into Premiere. Um, what I usually do is I pick out my first my first video, which I believe is going to be. We'll go with. We'll go with this one. So that clip. Um, I'm going to unlink the audio so it's command l on mac and control l on windows um just because we don't need to hear the audio here um so i'm going to remove that and then i'm going to drag in a clip um that i know i transitioned from the same direction so the the key to doing these in camera transitions is making sure that um the rotation that you're ending on, say if you've got the camera facing you and you rotate to the left, um, you're going to make sure that you're coming in from the left for your second clip. So it just adds that um, element of um, like fluidity. It makes everything sort of stick together a little bit better when you do it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this clip here because I'm confident that that one comes in from the other direction as well. Um, so we're going to zoom in on our timeline. Um, and I mean, on windows, your bracket keys will do that. Um, oh no, your, um, plus and minus keys will do that. Um, it also does it on Mac, but I have the advantage of having the trackpad that kind of allows you to do that, which is awesome. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to zoom in relatively close. It doesn't need to be like on top of it. Depends on how comfortable you are with working close to your timeline. Now, I'll do the same here. I'm going to unlink that. I'm going to remove the audio. Okay, so let's go to the end of this clip and get a bunch of beard. So we do the rotation. So back here is where... Jesus Christ, what was I doing? You'll find this once you start filming. You have a bunch of b-roll you've decided not to turn the camera off and it doesn't work out so all right so that's the transition i'm talking about and i apologize because the lumix's i a face detect in low light really isn't the greatest so it does get a bit blurry in some occasions but you can work with it so once you get your transition point where it turns away from you and you get sort of like this blur motion so you're kind of in this point of transition um, grab, press C, grab your cutting tool, cut it up and remove the rest of the video. Go to the start of, or yeah, it will be the start of your other clip and you'll be able to drag in with this little cursor at the end here. It turns red. 
um, that allows you to trim and extend your clip back to where it was. So it sort of keeps it, the information there, but it allows you without cutting it and removing it, it allows you to sort of get to the point where you wanna go. Now, when you're doing these transitions, you're going to, um, you're gonna have to do a couple of takes because lining it up the first time, unless you're like super pro, you're better than I am, um, lining up the first time, see how the framing's a bit off there. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll, I'll try again. So I get to hear, you, you're gonna need to remember how many attempts you had or just watch through the video first, which is usually the way you do it. Um, but that second attempt was my last one, I think. And then I sort of go, nope, no, no, it was not. So I'm gonna get to there. See what I mean? How you're gonna learn on the go. There we go. So we're in the transition period there to the lens and then I'll do sort of go across my lens. Amazing lens, by the way, if you wanna know all about that, let me know and I'll answer the question for you. All right, so we're at the end of the first video and we're gonna to transition to the first one. So if you chopped it right, it'll jump straight to that one. And if you transition out correctly, you can also do the same thing. So for an example here, let's zoom out of the timeline. And I'm just gonna cut this off because that's way too long. So for an example, if we've just spun out from, you can also open up your footage if you double click on it and you can watch your stuff in advance. So here, I believe I spun in from the right and then I spun out from the right or the left? Not from the left. No, I spun down. So I'm gonna grab, which I guess like realistically, if your footage is like, if, it's, if it reaches a point where it's kind of like that motion blur is enough, you could always go in and grab it at a point like, like here. So it's, it's pretty well blurred. You've got like a solid color here to go off of. So if we do this right, let's get rid of that and grab this. Once again, we'll unlink the audio, get rid of that. Now, if we grab this at the right point, no, try again, and let's grab it from here. So if we grab it and we match up the color right, you can still get a transition that looks like this, which still works um, if you've got a couple where you, you get into a habit when you start doing these transitions and you forget which way you went and you forget which one you went left on, which one you went right on, and it gets a little bit hard to to memorize where you were um, without watching through every video. So this can still work. It still makes for a cool transition because if you do it the right way, then you'll just keep going and there was another one out. Um, you'll just keep going and then you can eventually just smash a bunch of them together and it still looks very presentable. Um, but I guess it depends on how much of a perfectionist you are. Um, so I'm gonna unlink them and I'll get rid of that. And let's just do one more here. And I'll grab the end of this. See, this one drops in as well. No, I think I've got this semi on the first go. So you've got, let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this. Nope, can't do that. So let's go here. Let's go, so you've got, the end of this video that will spin into a shot of the lens and then we can spin out into a drop shot of these lenses and then and a battery grip and then we can spin out of this shot into a drop shot which I grabbed that at the wrong spot but you get the idea. Um, so yeah, that, that's how you tie those all together and then you add music and ideally you wanna try and match those up to a beat of a, um, of a soundtrack. Um, but yeah, if you wanna see some more about how I go about editing these kind of videos together and how I do these shots and stuff like that, um, feel free to send me a message, let me know what you wanna see. I'm happy to do more tutorials and stuff like this and work through the equipment that I use, um, whether it being software, hardware or other. 
Um, but yeah, happy to help you guys out. And yeah. So there we have it. A couple of little tips and tricks that you can use um, inside the camera to make your videos just a little bit more interesting. Um, thank you very much for joining me again this week. If you found this video interesting and you liked it, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down, do what you need to do. Um, if you've got questions about my gear, you've got questions just in general, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you'd like, follow, subscribe to both me and Pattenberry Productions would be greatly appreciated. And socials are at the end. See you next time. Peace.